Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Today, my guest is Arturo Jose Garcia, also known as AJ. He has 15 years of international experience and 10 years in senior management, public awareness campaigns, public relations, and undercover investigations. He has been a leader in the nonprofit realm for the last decade working with animal protection organizations such as CARE, Mercy for Animals, and Animal Recovery Mission. Currently, he is 50 by 40's head of operation. Stick around. I want to introduce him to you. Hi, Arturo. How are you? I'm great, Nancy. How are you? I'm doing fine. And you're out there in Port in, um, Port Saint, what St. Lucie? In Correct, Florida. Port St. Lucie. Correct, Port St. Lucie, Florida. I visited there. I don't know why I had so much trouble getting that out. <laughs> How are the plant-based actions um, options there? Um, it's not as much as I would like. You know, uh, West West Palm Beach is is a forty minute drive, so there are more options there. But uh, you know, I tend to we don't eat out very much. Uh, we tend to just you know uh, do. Uh, 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 a supermarket run, uh, you know, every week uh, to Whole Foods and load up on, you know, Whole Foods and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I'm not really into the plant-based restaurant scene here. I know that down in Miami, there is a ton, uh, but yeah, we're more of like my daughter and I would just kind of eat at home all the time. So. Well, I get that. Cause I'm not a restaurant person either, but I like to just find out how the options are in places I like to cook I like to cook and I like my cooking so I usually do the same thing like you and your daughter eat home <laughs> so yeah I actually ran a vegan restaurant for two years so it's oh. funny that I don't eat that many, <laughs> much out so so I do know tell me how did you come to veganism wow how much time do we have so <laughs> yeah I mean I came into veganism when I was living in South Korea I lived in South Korea for about 15 years and my really good friend, uh, best friend now, Kevin Leahy, he asked me to volunteer at an animal rights organization in South Korea. And uh, the volunteer project was uh, visiting some farms and, you know, talking to farmers and seeing if we could get some footage of the, you know, everyday operations at those farms. And, you know, for the first time in my life, you know, June, sorry, October 17th, 2011, I saw an animal um, get slaughtered for food, uh, you know, and I saw that live and it was the first time I'd ever seen an animal die in front of me. Uh, and, you know, after that experience, I decided to go vegan, kind of cold turkey. So I didn't gradually walk into it. Um, I just kind of stopped. Uh, I read Peter Singer's Animal Liberation and that kind of helped me to, I guess you might say, uh, feel confident about the decision that I made uh, because he brings up a lot of good points in that book. And yeah, I've been a vegan ever since. Okay. And so tell me about 50 by 40, your organization uh, and how you are helping to further whole plant-based foods and sustainability for the planet. Sure thing. So uh, I work for, like you said, an organization called 50 by 40, where I am their head of operations there. Uh, our CEO is Lasse Brun. And 50 by 40 focuses on reducing the dependency on animal agriculture by 50% by the year 2040 via a just livestock, just livestock transition. And what we do is basically we, we convene and we lead a global cross-sector stakeholder group to catalyze and augment efforts to achieve significant reductions in the most unsustainable forms of animal production and uh, through awareness uh, raising, advocacy, and campaigning. And we do this several ways. Um, we participate in major fora, such as the COP, the Conference of Parties, COP26 is coming up very soon. We also participate in the United Nations and the United Nations Food Systems Summit. Uh, you're just making sure that the dialogue is happening about creating a food system that is fair, healthy, and compassionate. And we do this by focusing on several things such as, you know, health and the environment, as well as the animal welfare aspect of it. 
That's awesome. I mean, that's that's exactly what we need. We need to change the system. We can't just wish for it. We have to actually have, you know, processes and plans in place in order to have these individuals transition, like you said, into a more uh, cruelty-free environment. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I did, I have done advocacy for the past 11 years. And in the beginning, I was focused a lot on individual change, right? What you would, you know, maybe think about, you know, one-on-one outreach, one-on-one, you know, like the talks and, and, you know, turning people vegan, like how many people could I talk to and then have them turn vegan, kind of like that individual approach. And I did believe in the past that we can eat our way into a vegan world, that if just people themselves made the personal choice to eat a whole food plant-based diet, or even a plant predominant diet, right? Like shifting towards that way. I thought that that was the most pragmatic and effective way to do it, but it wasn't until later in my advocacy that I started focusing on systems change because we're talking about food systems. If we want people to go vegan, we need systems in place that support that kind of choice. And our food systems are extremely, extremely complex. You know, sometimes we don't think about it and we only think about, oh, we just have people eat impossible burgers or beyond burgers and, and you know, great, that, that, that's all we need. But no, because our food system is a web of intricacies. We got production, waste, consumption, processing, packaging, distribution, retail. Those are all the things that come out of the food system. And then what surrounds the food system? We have things like social welfare, environmental welfare, food security is a big one. Socioeconomic feedback, such as population change. We have environmental feedbacks, such as greenhouse gases, for example, right? We have socioeconomic drivers, such as economy, demographics, government, technology, and culture. So, and last but not least, environmental drivers, climate, soil, water, nutrients, availability, biodiversity. So it's such a huge intricate system that touches every single part of our lives that without changing systems, I think it's really hard to expect or put that kind of burden on the individual to live a vegan life in a non-vegan world, if that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. It all, you know, that's, uh, it's just like you, I thought, yeah, talking to people and having people, once you know what's happening, people just want to change because they want to do the right thing, but that's not exactly how it works. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we have to work on is awareness, education, like you're doing, like you're talking about and your organization is doing, but we also have to change laws. We have to, otherwise it's just a dream. It's not, you know, it's something we're hoping for, but without the action and the work behind it, it doesn't have a chance. I couldn't agree with you more. When I think about our food systems, right? I think about what what is what is food, right? Food is food is policy. Food is climate. Food is food security. Our food system unfortunately has been built on exploitation and oppression. The food system is very racist, right? There's a lot of inherently oppressive things that come with what our food system entails. Think about also health systems, right? And we should have doctors practicing preventative medicine via encouraging people to adopt a plant-based predominant diet. So it's this intricate web of things that are just all connected and it's very intersectional, extremely intersectional. So for me, when I see veganism being approached through a singular lens, uh, I find very hard to, I find that not very palpable because again, it's such an intersectional system that we're talking about. Definitely. And um, I run a a nonprofit organization called Sprouting Compassion. And and the premise is that veganism, yes, is to liberate the suffering of the animals, but there's so much more than that because veganism is truly a social justice issue when you talk about what you just mentioned, you know, um, food. Yeah, I, go, go ahead. ahead. 
No, yeah, I, I couldn't. I, I'm smiling ear to ear because I, I couldn't agree more with you. And I have worked undercover on factory farms. And I, I will tell you firsthand that our food systems exploits not only the animals, but the factory farm workers and the communities surrounding the factory farm. So it's, it's just, again, uh, I'm going to quote someone that, that I read frequently. Uh, her name is Alicia D. Kennedy. And she has a great quote that says, you know, as we face more and more disasters because there hasn't been sufficient organized response to climate change and extractive capitalism, it is important to remember who is already suffering, who is suffering now, right? And to center those voices and needs. Because at the end of the day, we are in this together and we will overcome and mitigate the climate crisis together. So we need an inclusive, compassionate, you know, approach that's, that we lead with humanity and empathy. And again, a big part of that is awareness and education because right now we, people don't understand our water is depleting. Our earth is drying up because the, the water system is being polluted mainly I mean, there are other factors, but mainly animal agriculture. And right now, you know, you open up your faucet and you have water, but there are already places where there is no water, where they're fighting for water. And just like COVID started out in China, it hit us, right? And we were in lockdown, still some places still in lockdown. So when you think that, oh, it's not gonna happen to me, oh, you're very wrong, it will happen. And then they'll go, I didn't know. So I think education and awareness is a big thing. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. So it's a wonderful thing that there's an organization like yours, where you work, that is doing just that, trying to help people understand that is not just about the animals, but uh, they're the workers in those slaughterhouses. There are those communities that house those slaughterhouses where people are ill, their um, soil is polluted, their water is uh, also polluted, and they have to live there. You know, you won't see that in a high-end neighborhood because those people will not tolerate that. So it's a social, economic, uh, also prejudice um, that's happening. And so when people talk to me about it and they say, you know, it's, oh, it's just about, it's not just about the animals. It's about every one of us. And not to mention, like you said, everyone's health because the health of America is awful. And the reason is awful is because what, you know, because not enough doctors have enough education on, uh, on food, diet, nutrition, and not enough doctors are going ahead to promote that. I mean, thank goodness for people like Dr. Greger, Dr. Gard Davis, Dr. Joel Kahn and PCRM, you know, Dr. Neil Bernard, who are trying to make those changes in those fields. I couldn't agree more. It's going to take a multi-sector, multi-professional approach. It's going to take government. It's going to take the nonprofit sector, the NGO sector, and of course, the individual in order for us to nurture and foster the change that we wanna see in our food systems. It has to happen, otherwise there will be no world for our kids, their grandkids, because it won't be sustainable and it'll just end. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, I am, I'm a father to a six-year-old daughter uh, who has been vegan since conception. And, you know, it, 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 it's incredible to see uh, her grow up, you know, so healthy and, and happy and, in the know of the state of our planet. And, you know, you ask her, why are you vegan? And she says, because I want to protect my animal friends and the planet. And so awesome. it's, I agree with you. It's about education and awareness and about being kind, compassionate and leading with humanity. And, and that's a big thing right there. Like you said, your daughter, she's vegan. She's, she's already showing compassion. That's what we need. A lot more kinder, more compassionate, individuals being raised up to be just that and not you know in the exploiting and taking advantage of others less fortunate because you know it is a prejudice and and when you place it on one individual whether it be human or non-human it's so easily transferable to humans you know whether it be seniors or different ethnicity ethnicity okay 
ethnic people <laughs> of different backgrounds. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It's a, it's a never ending circle of exploitation, right? Which um, we need to make sure, you know, I, I, I'm gonna be very honest. I don't think we'll ever achieve a world with zero exploitation, right? I think that's a very utopian way of thinking, but, but, but that doesn't mean that we stop. It doesn't mean we don't try. So I try to live my life thinking, how can I reduce as much suffering as possible while I'm on this planet? Because that is all we can do. We can try and we can work on it and making sure that we're choosing, making the compassionate choice. And when, and when you do that, you have to feel good inside because you know you're not hurting on purpose anyone. You know, because you'll, you'll hear people go, oh, you can't be totally vegan. Okay, that is true. Because, you know, you go outside, you step on an ant or you go and, you know, whatever the reason they give you, it's true. But you could do the best you can to minimize, you know, minimize anything that hurts something else another individual the planet exactly it's it's not a project with a, a deadline it's a journey right and yes you can strive for perfection but don't think you're ever going to find it because perfection doesn't exist for all human at the end of the day right so you know i try to live my life thinking nothing is personal nothing's permanent nothing's perfect so I'm just going to live my life doing the best that I can in the circumstances that I have with the resources that are available to me. Wow. Thank you, Arturo. You are an inspiration. You're a young guy uh, out there doing the work that we need done to change our evil ways. No, <laughs> to change our, our ways. It's no one's fault. This is just the way it has been. It's just learning to do better and be better. That's all. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nancy, for the chance to speak with you. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us in another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember, check out our website, follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan.